So for most people that are not as heavily into watches, still assume that watches can be expensive, but I don't think many understand how expensive the world of vintage watches and just watches can be. To put this into context, there's a super yacht called the Misunderstood. The yacht is 150 feet long, features unbelievable amenities, like four private bedroom suites, a gym, a state-of-the-art kitchen, and media room. The yacht is on sale for $16.9 million. However, what if I told you that this yacht is only more expensive than one of the three watches that we're gonna be looking at today? What is going on everybody? Teddy Baldessar here, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at three of the most expensive watches ever sold. So guys, let's jump into the video. In 2016, there was news of a rare Patek that was set to be put up for auction. A Patek Philippe reference 1518. Patek has made 281 of this specific reference, made in a variety of precious metals as well. The yellow gold 1518 trade around $250,000 to the $500,000 mark, and the rose gold trade around the $500,000 mark to the $1.5 million mark. So with that considered, you would probably imagine that the steel would be sold for less than these two, since steel is nowhere near as precious as a metal. However, when you consider that of the 281 1518s produced, over 200 were yellow gold, and there were several dozen rose gold 1518s produced. When you start to do the math, you begin to ask the question, so how many stainless steel versions of the 1518 were made? The answer, just four steel 1518s were ever made. The watch is 35 millimeters in diameter, manually wound, and is powered by a heavily modified and finished value movement. Patek introduced the 1518 in 1941 as the first perpetual calendar with a chronograph ever made. Back in the 1980s, the first Patek 1518 steel was discovered on the market in the Dime District in New York City. The watch back then was merely placed at the price point of $45. Over the years, the four steel Pateks have been placed on auction, gradually going up with every sale. And in November of 2016, a steel Patek reference 1518 sold for $11.1 million, making it the most expensive wristwatch ever sold at that time. So what watch would replace this steel 1518 on the throne? None other than our next watch here. Paul Newman, one of the most famous figures of the 20th century, was a man with countless talents. From his acting, directing, and racing chops, to his selfless work as a philanthropist, there's little reason to guess why he's such a beloved figure. During Newman's many appearances, whether on set for a movie, a night out in the town, or in the driver's seat, he would often be seen wearing his 1968 Rolex Daytona. The watch was a gift to Newman from his wife, Joanne Woodward, and features the words, drive carefully, me, on the case back, as well as a highly recognized exotic dial that has become one of the true holy grails of the vintage watch collecting world. The iconic Paul Newman dial design is incredibly rare, as only two to 3,000 of the watches were ever produced, each one of them fetching well into the six figures on the open market. However, when there was word that Paul Newman's actual Daytona would be selling, the buzz was off the charts. Paul Newman gifted his Daytona to James Cox in 1984, his daughter Nell's boyfriend at the time. The watch at the time were really selling around just $200. However, when Cox decided to put the watch up for auction, he knew much more money was coming his way and was set to donate a large percentage of the sale amount to the Nell Newman Foundation. The watch went up for auction at Phillips New York headquarters at 57th and Park Avenue, and the proceedings were led by Arl Bax, the same auctioneer that sold the 1518 mentioned earlier. In the 12 minute duration of the auction, the watch managed to reach the sale price of $17.8 million, making it now the most expensive wristwatch ever sold at auction. And now for our last watch, what we're gonna be looking at is the most expensive watch ever sold when you include the world of pocket watches as well as wristwatches. Henry Graves was an American banker who made millions in the early part of the 20th century as a result of being a founder and partner in the Maxwell and Graves banking firm and his work in the railroad industry. As a result of his life of affluence, Graves was a passionate collector of art and watches. As a supporter of Patek Philippe, he contacted the brand to have them create the most complicated watch 
ever produce. This request was fueled by his relentless desire to be the best and in his competition with James Ward Packard, a prominent automobile manufacturer who recently commissioned to create one of the most complicated watches ever made. However, Graves did not want to be outdone, and after his request to create the most complicated watch ever made and spending $15,000 to have it commissioned in 1925, over $290,000 when adjusted for inflation in 2018, he surpassed his rival in 1933 to become the owner of the most complicated watch ever made. The watch is known as the Patek Philippe Henry Graves Super Complication. The pocket watch featured an astounding 24 complications took three years to design and another five years to manufacture. Some of the complications included were Westminster chimes, a perpetual calendar, sunrise and sunset times, a chronograph, and my favorite, a celestial map of New York as seen from Graves' apartment on Fifth Avenue. The timepiece contains 920 individual parts with 430 screws, 110 wheels, 120 removable parts, and 70 jewels. The watch has a diameter of 74 millimeters and a thickness of 36 millimeters. And one of the most remarkable things about this watch is the watch remained the most complicated watch ever made until 1989 when Patek Philippe released the Patek Caliber 89. Following Graves' death in 1953, his daughter, Gwendolyn, inherited the super complication and in 1960 passed it to her son, Reginald Pete Fullerton, who sold it to a wealthy industrialist from Illinois for $200,000. And in 1968, the watch was sold to the Time Museum in Rockford, Illinois, which closed in March of 1999. This led to the first time the watch went up for auction that same year, which it fetched $11 million. However, in 2014, the watch was said to again be put up for auction Auction, this time demanding a price of $24 million by an anonymous buyer. Well, Mr. Graves, your request of the creation of this masterpiece came to fruition and the watch is still turning heads till this day. So guys, what did you think of these three watches? Do you have a favorite watch of the three watches mentioned? And uh, would you like me to continue to do this series? I think there's a lot of other expensive watches that have some unique stories behind them that I could definitely take a look at. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That all really supports the channel within YouTube's algorithm. So that really allows us to continue to grow. Also, be sure to go check me out on Instagram, follow me there so you can stay up to date with the watch giveaways. So the watch this month that we're gonna be offering up is the Seiko SNK803. So if you wanna be entered to win, be sure to fill out the form down below and also be following me on Instagram so that you can stay up to date when we're gonna announce the winner. And finally, if you wanna support this new generation of watch lovers that we're trying to foster up on this channel, go check out our Patreon. Any support there would be greatly appreciated. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.